Okay, my wonderful friends, Roger once again, Mud Fossil University, a little uh, irritated today. They're claiming a huge breakthrough, February 2021. They can actually see pulses of light, they say. Well, I don't see any pulses of light. I see a little doodle here. Now, I will show you real pulses of true laser light, which is accelerated broken into photons and not only broken into photons we can literally break the photons into muons and electron showers we did this five years ago six years ago we finished it up six years ago here we go all right i'm going to show you something they're going to show you little squiggly lines this is real pulsed red laser being accelerated this is where the concussion occurs this is where the excitation happens and if you put your little fiber optic cable right there pew, out it goes and that's what they want to do that's what they're talking about doing now rod and i have worked on that for years and then we published it this is what they're doing say oh boy we figured this all out this was only a couple of months ago and they said we knew about this for the last two years well we well you're going to see it in a second Okay, my wonderful friends, Roger, once again, Mud Fossil University, just got done speaking with Rod Warren, who was the one who accidentally discovered that you could accelerate light and split the photons of light. Now, these guys have, have accelerated light, but I don't know if they know they can split light. Well, they obviously, <laughs> I think everybody's been watching our, our work, because this goes back to 2016 June 2016 that's like five years ago and I said back then light is dark energy <laughs> light has the dark energy built right into it and when it hits matter and it bounces now listen to this I'm showing that light comes from the Sun obviously it spins as a particle and smashes into our atmosphere which is way out here causing 2700 degrees out here forcing itself to concuss with our scrubbing atmosphere now listen to this is how much the earth is growing per hour all right these are particles that were captured by all right I, that i that was i forgot all about that <laughs> this was I was figuring out how much the earth was growing per hour based on what they said per square kilometer we absorb and how many square kilometers are being hit by the sun and how much each pho photon or electron weighs. <laughs> and I calculated out how much mass we're gaining per hour. <laughs> It was like five years ago. I don't know. I was just having a good time. But these are the particles. And that's the dark matter. And that's the explosive electron. Two of them back to get back are just like two biomagnets. The, uh, the experiments. But I believe this is a torus. And, and somehow the electron activity does what you would think. Of. I think it might be. Well, I'm not going to go too much deeper with this. Now I'm in the feather stage. That was, I smacked the screen and people got mad at me. <laughs> But here's, you know, there's the, there's the particles, there's the green ones. The red ones do exactly the same thing. Now uh, here's what the wave is coming across. It's pulsed red laser. In front, all these particles get excited because the whole region is being, being concussed magnetically in a region against their magnetic regions. That's all it is, a magnetic region pushed to shoved. Now, what else we got here? Oh, yeah, this is how light spins. Light spins. It doesn't wave and flap. It spins just like this. Zip, zip, zip. And some spin over that way, and some spin over this way and come out that way. Some are here, some are here, some are in the middle. Most goes in the middle. But these are not interference patterns. Those are patterns that are created because of push to shove. They don't want to be next to each other. The white ones get away, get away. The black ones don't care. They'll just jump right on top of each other. They couldn't care less. Uh, what do we got here? All right, this is the accelerated light. That was the wave before. Remember, just a wave, 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 wave. Well, now we're putting it through a venturi, and that's where they put it. They call it a funnel. But we did this. This is five, six years. The exact same thing. Only ours, we didn't have to use a funnel. We used a, a, a venturi which is like airplane wings, the same thing. 
and coming out the other side, this way, is the Higgs fields. And they, there's a zone of, of extreme energetic reaction here that nothing happens. The particles are so highly energized that nothing happens until they concuss. This is a reverse spinner caused a really strange interaction. So, Rod should get his due for this. He's the one that created this, not those guys. All right, this just came out know, a couple months ago. The record-breaking source for single photons. I showed the exact single photons. I showed them pulsing, and they know how long they are. They're, only, they're several centimeters long, actually. Um, and they they want to use this for transmitting data, and I know how to do this. And it, it's, it would be done with different semiconductor emitters and different semiconductor receivers. So it's a stimula it's a, a, a particle that would force a certain stimulation on the other side to pick it up as a as a qubit, a quantum bit. Now. Um, the, 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 the collaboration with such and such university scientists from report the development single photon source significantly per, per surpasses previously known systems in terms of efficiency. It's exactly what Rod did. Interestingly, a new single photon source can produce billions of quantum particles per second, billions per second, and they are in the fo you know the indivisible the range. They're not nothing that hurts anybody. The system employed gated quantum dots. All that is is little funnels they use, which is nothing more than little venturis. You know, in a venturi in a carburetor, exactly what it was. You, you squeeze it down where it restricts the flow through there so that it crushes the magnetic fields. I don't even know if they realize what they did, but I, I'm sure they've been watching our work. Five, six years I've been forcing this on everybody. All right, so at least somebody's paying attention. Now, they put it through this tunable micro-cavity, which is the venturi. Photons leave the quantum dot in all possible directions normally. They just go everywhere. Well, no. If you put them through a venturi, they come out in that spray I showed you. It leads to the loss of large fractions. Scientists address this problem by positioning the quantum dot inside a funnel, which is the venturi. That's all a venturi is a funnel. Doing so, photons pass through a specific direction. Showed it. Done it long ago. Also, the funnel captures almost all of the photons, yes. And then it's going to direct them into a fiber optic, which you would put in front of our venturi, absolutely. The photons, each about two centimeters long, emerge at the end of the optical fiber. And they're going so fast that two centimeters, you can still have bazillions of them in there at the same one second. Um, and then they talk a little more about this. This is, this, is, this is really a special moment. Rod, yes it is, my friend. A special moment for you, buddy. We've known for a year or two what's possible in principle. Well, a year or two. We've known. We have did it six years ago. Now we succeed in putting our ideas in practice. Have they done any, any quantum computing? I'd like to see the quantum computing if they did it already. We so, showed that we can do this, qubits. We showed this. That's not a problem. But can you use it to... Did they compute? I don't think so. So the increase in efficiency significantly con has, will have, has significant consequences. Increasing efficiency of a single photon creation by a factor of two adds up to an overall improvement of a factor of one million for a string of, say, 20 photons. In the future, we'd like to make a, our single photon source even better. I know how to make it better already. We'd like to simplify it and pursue some of its myriad applications. They, they haven't done anything with it other than done what Rod did. That's all that's been done. I'm sorry, it's Rod Warren's. He's the one that deserves the credit for this. They've only known about this for a year or two, and then they, they still don't have anything better. They don't even close to Rod yet. Rod split the light into, into dark matter. <laughs> all right, this is what CERN and Fermi Lab and all of the top physicists are trying to understand. What is the muon, and how does it react, and what does it do, and what's its energetic values, and what's it, what happens with it when it concusses? Because this is coming in and then concussion. That's Cheryankov. Same thing with an electron. It comes in, it concusses. But this electron causes showers.
The muon doesn't do anything. It just comes in and just stays here. It doesn't do anything. Well, they had no idea these two were attached together. Because when they collide particles, they have billions. We have these, we showed them just attached together. Now, here's what we did. And I'm going to show you, Rod deserves a credit for this, not CERN or any of them, none of these people. Here it is right here. And he's worked on this for many years. He's working on it still today. And he's getting in some new equipment. He's, he's not a guy with a lot of resources. So he deserves some resources because what he's doing exceeds anybody else. This is the pulse red laser. That's the concussion I showed you. That's the acceleration. That is where it turns into explosive, concussive electron showers. And we will see the muon walking right away from the electrons in a second. What happens is just before they concuss, that is what the particle looks like. It comes down further and then, bam, it slams and it just explodes at the Venturi. Now, this is blue. Blue is, um, I don't see any real separation in like the red and the green. I think it's just a little too powerful. But you can see it's expanded and slowing down. I don't have too many shots of blue. I don't know, Rod didn't do much in the blue. Now, this is a reverse spinner particle and it crashed into a regular Higgs field and created this. That is just <laughs> over the edge. But don't forget, I said I can show you splitting the photon. They really don't know what they have. They know they can create photons, but I'm going to show you the photon, which is that. And then I'm going to show you it's split into a muon, exactly what they were talking about, a muon and electron showers. And here they are. Boom. There's your muons. And that is the white electron ball just exploding into showers, exactly what they showed for the muon neutrino, electron neutrino. No difference whatsoever. And here is your couple centimeters out. They reattach. The muon reattaches to the electron. It wants to grab it and pull it in. This is gravity. And, and, but they don't mind being right on top of each other. See the black ones? They'll just lay right on top of each other. Couldn't care less. So the end up result of every molecule is you are going to have an outside of white particles surrounding a black dot in the center. And the white ones here, because they'll push all their black ones into the center. They don't matter to be on top of each other. But the white ones will say, get away, get away, you get away, you get away. But they have to be attached to those black balls. So the black balls will go to the center and the white will surround it. And there is excessive dark matter everywhere, yes. And this is the dark matter. It does not concuss. It does not explode. It does not absorb. It does not emit. It is gravity and dark matter. And a muon, if you want to call it that. Or a boson, if you want to call it that, too. They have so many names. You can go on for a week with the names. All right, so if you really want to know how light works and you want to know what the rotation of light, how that affects everything, this is rotating spirals of photons. They're particles. Now, there is so much here that's just not understood. These are particles leaving. We're looking at the back end of the particles. These are particles coming in. These are particles spinning. This is the back end. This is the spin towards us, which is concussing at us. We know these things so inside and out now, after so many years of working with them, we have things to offer. We'd like to offer them. Rod is going to, like I say, I, well, I don't know if I told you yet, but he, we just had some discussion about how to go forward with this. He needs some, he needs some help. He needs somebody to step up. You know, it's, it's, it's frustrating when you have something and nobody will listen to you and you, you have the evidence and then they come out and they say, oh, we figured this out, we figured that out. They still don't know what they're doing compared to Rod. They'll be 10 years behind him. And here, the things he did, absolutely phenomenal and just disregarded. And I, I went to the University of Geneva to try to get them to look at this stuff and uh, they weren't interested either. So, you know, they thought it was pretty cool, but that is about it. So I, I'm starting to think that everybody has their own little little thing, and if they find something, they sort of hide it, and they want to get their benefit out of it. I understand that. But Rod and I don't work that way. We want to get the benefit out of it to show what things really are and the truth of the things that there are, because it makes a big difference. You could walk around in circles, spend all the money you want to spend, and, and just do things that are meaningless, really meaningless. And backwards, really.
very, very distressing if you're a true scientist to have this kind of stuff ignored for this length of time. It's very, very distressing. But it's the world we live in right now.